Hello there, welcome to the last subtopic of the kinematics chapter. So in kinematics, we learn how to describe motion, but all the motions that we've described until this point is in one dimension. So maybe it moves forward, maybe it moves back. But what I have behind me is the human cannonball. So you can see a human is being shot out of the cannonball and it goes meow into the, I mean, hopefully safely into the net. So you will notice that if you look at the movement of this human, he's going to arch upwards and then come back down. Now, if I ask you to draw a vector arrow to describe or basically to indicate the velocity of this human being, what would you draw? So you could say, okay, let's start with the cannon. Okay, so when the human leaves the cannon, it will probably have a velocity in this direction, V. But does it stay in this direction? Well, not really. So if you look at this position, if I draw a line parallel to this human, you can see the angle of velocity has shifted. And because this angle keeps changing, for example, at this highest position before he's on the way down, this is the velocity V of this human being, uh, then we kind of need to, we have, a, we have a problem. All right. So let's think a bit about Stuba. So before this, uh, hopefully you have done enough Stuva practice to understand that these things is important to also consider the direction or the factor. In other words, if it's one dimension, meaning go up, come down, move forward, break, overtake another car, all that, U, V and A are parallel. But in projectile motion, where is your acceleration, my friends? The direction of gravity is always pulling downwards. This is why when the human leaves this uh, cannon, it will experience a downward pull, causing it to change direction and then move down, down, down. This uh, rotation is just the human being extra flipping. Lah, okay? But if let's say the human didn't flip, he won't be able to land on his back and that would be not good because landing on your face generally not recommended, okay? But if we treat this human kind of like an arrow, you will notice that gravity is pulling the human down. So as it moves here, it will slow down, and then here it will speed up, okay? So the problem here, or rather I write the problem statement here for you, is that number one, V changes direction, okay? Does it change magnitude? Probably, right, remember? slow down, speed up. So this one is V1, V2, V3. So changes direction and magnitude. And the second situation here is your direction of G is not parallel higher to V. In fact, it's almost never parallel. Teacher, how are? Well, if you have a vector that is not in the direction that you want, remember what to do from previous chapter? factor in the direction that we don't want, we have to resolve. So now let's look at how to resolve, or rather let's do a recap on resolving vectors. Let's say you have a projectile system, or maybe you launch an object or you launch a human being at an angle of theta from the horizontal. Okay, so our issue here is that the gravity is downwards. So I need to resolve the vector such that I have one that is parallel to gravity, and then when I use Stuva, I will include gravity. And then another one that's horizontal, where gravity will not affect it. So I'm going to split this into half, okay? So this component is moving up. So I have an upward component. Move the component is, this view is also moving to the right. So I have a right component. So it's split. If let's say you don't like this split, split one, you prefer to draw a triangle. It is okay. Then you draw a triangle like that. Oh, I prefer to draw like this. Okay, they are the same drawing. So when resolving, the one that is right beside the angle is cos because cos is side over hypotenuse. So this one will be u cos theta. And the one that is opposite the angle, okay, this will be u sine theta. All right. So u sine theta and g is the one that will influence your velocity. So let us go back to this diagram. Okay, so I'm going to uh, adjust a bit and draw different, different values of velocity. Okay, so I've drawn the velocity vector at different, different points along the projectile. Okay, so we call this projectile is because you throw something, it's called a projectile. 
So if I throw a pen at you, my pen is performing a projectile towards you because you tend to throw things at an angle like that. Okay, anyway, so you will notice the first thing is that the angle keeps changing, right? So if let's say I measure this one from the horizontal, okay, the at the bomb, at the cannon part, this is theta. Okay, and as I previously mentioned, the vertical component was resolved into u sine theta. But if you look at the vertical component, right, the vertical component will get smaller and smaller. So you may be asking, teacher, how do you know the vertical component is smaller and smaller? Well, actually, this arrow should be shorter. Well, I know this because the gravity is downwards, right? So if I want to draw this properly, you can see the length of the green arrow should be shorter and shorter. So this is because direction of g is downwards. So because, and if g is downwards, the velocity will slow down. So that, that means at the maximum height, at max height, the vertical velocity is zero. So this is probably a situation where I will have to tell you that we are going to separate out the component. And the reason why we do so is because gravity only acts vertically. Teacher, horizontal no force, man. no acceleration. No, ah. if we ignore air resistance, which we will for the early part of our studies, there's no horizontal force. Then if there's no horizontal force, do you know what this means? This means that this u cos theta will not change. Forever the same. Here would be u cos theta. The length of this arrow will straight away be u cos theta. And then as we continue this journey, this will be u cos theta. This will still be u cos theta. All day, every day, u cos theta. Okay? Because there is no horizontal acceleration. All right, I'll list that down later. And after you travel to the maximum height, what happened to Vy? Vy will begin to accelerate. Okay, let me make this a bit shorter. Vy will begin to accelerate in the opposite direction. Okay, so this one is Vy. So this whole thing, the whole point here is that we divide and conquer. Okay, so whatever that is done in the vertical component, we separate out with the horizontal component. We did this before in vectors. So once we do all the necessary calculation, then if you want to combine them together to look for the value of the length of the blue color arrow, you can. But at first, we still need to split them up first. Okay, so let's do a quick Stuva analysis for this scenario. Huh? Okay, so right now, if I do STUVA, Basically, if you have you learned to use this to decide which equation to use and when to use which equation, okay? Uh, we're going to start off with the x component, which is the horizontal component, okay? So horizontal, the important thing to know here is that the acceleration is zero. No horizontal forces, especially if air resistance is neglected. If no air resistance... Okay, uh, if there's no acceleration, means u is equal to v, and they will both be u cos theta. Okay, remember this one is u, and this is theta. So the horizontal component here would be u cos theta. Can I? Okay, so the rest here is uh, dependent on what the question wants you to find. So let me give you the most vanilla format of the question first. Let's say now I want to know where should I put the 10 uh, so this person don't GG. <laughs> where to put the 10? Okay, so we'll measure from the launching point, let's say here, all the way to the landing point here. We will call this the range R. How far you throw something is the range. Horizontal displacement. So this one is known as range R. So on your own notes, if you can't put a picture like that, then you just draw a parabola. No? Or later you can check out different versions of the parabola. 
Okay. So, teacher, how do you know this is a parabola? I know it's curved, but why is it a parabola? I think you look at it also, you know it's a parabola, but I will record a bonus video to derive why it's a parabola, but it's not within the main discussion of your syllabus. Okay, let us carry on to the Y component. If you look at the Y component, we start with U sine theta. So let me put that down here first. The initial velocity is U sine theta. And the final velocity, um, don't know but it is zero at max height okay zero at max height but the important thing here is gravity the gravitational acceleration is downwards so when you think about sine let's say we take u sine theta upward as positive then gravity downward must be negative so this one is negative g or negative 9.81 Okay, please know that uh, look at the direction of motion and where the direction I'm throwing. Compare, these two should have the opposite side. Cool. All right, and I think uh, if you're looking for maximum height, you will put B at zero. This is, then some of you may be thinking, teacher, this Y component oh, is like free fall. Eh? Correct. Lah. So this is actually following free fall. Okay. Free fall where the direction of uh, gravity is always in the same direction. But now it's just free fall and stretch out. You know, you free fall, you throw something up, you come down. This is free fall. Correct? But projectile here is just you throw something up, but it's still moving. It still has horizontal velocity and then go like that. Because uh, it, it has this vertical velocity, but it also has this horizontal velocity. So the horizontal velocity is what stretches out your free fall. So it no longer just go up, come down. It will go up and then forward or sideways. I mean, depending on which angle you're throwing your stuff. You throw balls before, you all know, right? You throw things right all the time. Throw textbook, throw basketball. Okay. Throw away your hopes and dreams. Joking, joking, joking. Keep, take, take, take back, take back. Don't throw, don't throw. Okay, so the Y component here, uh, depending on what you want to find, so it is uh, maximum height is zero, or you could also find whatever you need to find. I'm just going to leave all of this empty because, you know, I don't know what you're looking for. I need to look at the question. So I'm still going to put a question mark here. Depend on question. Okay. So what is left here is this time. Technically speaking, we only have one human being, right, coming out of the cannonball. We only have one object. So if it's one object, it should be at one place at one time. Okay? So then it should have the same time. So T, T. So important note here, I will write the time of flight. T is the same. For both. If, you are in, if your initial and final is at the same place. The only thing I want to talk about the time of flight is uh, this time of flight part is symmetrical. Okay, so right now, if let's say we start off our motion, mm. let's say here, T is equal to zero. Right in the maximum point here, T is equal to capital T, let's say lah, okay. So by the time you reach here, oh, T is equal to 2T, two times. Because the time it takes for you to go up is the same as the time it takes for you to come down. Remember, this is like free fall, just stretch. Still the same free fall that you know from the previous case study, just stretch. Okay, so that's it for this uh, part where we analyze the qualitative style of the projectile motion. Okay, what do we need to know? We need to know how to split. Okay, and the reason why we resolve the vector is because the direction of this part will keep changing. This will be a parabola like this. Okay, so we are splitting it up. The horizontal component, because no horizontal force, it remains unchanged. Yay. So you can see u cos theta, u cos theta, u cos theta, u cos theta, u cos theta. Very nice, right? And your x component here, remember to put a equal to zero here. Okay, vertical component, will interact with negative g. So then make sure you write negative g here. Lor. They are in opposite direction. So that's why it will slow down smaller and smaller and zero, bigger and bigger. Okay. So you may be wondering what kind of questions will they ask me? 
Well, sometimes they will ask you things like, uh, is the velocity zero at the maximum height? No. The velocity for the y component is zero, but the x component of not zero, not zero. Okay. This is vx. vx is not zero. So that means there is still speed or there's still velocity. Okay. That's a very common misconception that people have. The vertical one is zero. Horizontal one doesn't change. See, vx is always the same. Same today, tomorrow, always, until it hits the ground. Uh, then there's a different story. All right. So that's all for this part. Qualitative. You can describe, you know what is going on. It will slow and then it will speed up. Never stop. Ah, uh, doesn't stop. Okay. So right now, the questions, besides asking you this conceptual question, they could ask you two classes of uh, scenarios. One would be giving you numbers and asking you to calculate things like, how long will this man stay in the air? How far do I need to put the safety net? How, what angle should I angle my, my thingy, my, my human cannon, so that it will land on the safety net? So quali qualitative calculations are possible. They can sometimes also ask you, Qualita qualitative, quantitative calculation is possible, but sometimes they will also ask you to derive or algebraic manipulation. So the question style is normally on, I'll list down for you, lah. normally on concept or understanding. After that, we will may need to derive or use, derive or come up with some equation, as you can see from this example here. Look at this. Okay. Or we can use calculate. Right. So I will start off with calculate because numbers is easier to brain. And then uh, we will look at the other derivation examples. So I will see you in the example videos, K. Okay? Hang tight.